<laughs> Hi, it's Jeffrey Cohen, Chicago Quantum. How are you? It's been a while since I made a video. Let's pick the seat up. Make sure I got my coffee. So I'm Jeffrey Cohen. Chicago Quantum, U.S. Advanced Computing Infrastructures, Inc. We're registered investment advisors in Illinois. We work with high net, work indivi high net worth individuals, investment managers, and the occasional retail investor, but we probably won't charge you if, uh, if you're retail. Just nice to have people to talk to. So give us a call. You can find us pretty easily. You go to our homepage, contact. You know, it's me. It's a phone number, address, email. So come on in, check us out. We've got a FINRA broker check. We've got a brochure. Got all the details. So I want to talk to you today about how our model came up last, like this past week, as being very much risk off. We, in fact, made a blog post, said today is a risk off day in the U.S. stock market. So go back to bed. If you're, uh, if you're investing today, just take it easy. Don't do so much. So let me talk about what we're finding. And, you know, our Chicago quantum net score, our reason for being, so to speak, is to find mathematical edges in the market. So what's a good thing to try and beat is the S&P 500 equity index. So the S&P 500 equity index, if you looked at all the data for 3,394 stocks, as of Friday close, the best portfolio that we found, I mean, we didn't like uh, split the atom on this one, but we ran it pretty hard. We got 39 stocks held evenly. Things like Starbucks, Apple, Google, Hewlett Packard, Intel, Pfizer. So lots of big names, Microsoft, which I'm always amazed, Eli Lilly, Amazon, Broadcom, why why are we only finding big stocks? They're not all big. B. Riley. Okay. So all those stocks have a an advantage of 74 ticks better than holding all the stocks together. But if you just held the S&P 500, the equity index ETF, you get 61 ticks. So you're getting 80% of the edge just by holding the S&P 500 today. Put another way, there's really no advantage to investing in the Chicago Quantum Net Score long stocks today. And we can explain why that is, but that's not the point. The point is stay home today. Stay diversified. The S&P 500, the math behind the S&P 500 is better right now than it's been in a long time. And so it's good. Just don't worry about it. So now what are we doing, right? So we're doing something very different. We are long two very risky stocks that we think are dramatically undervalued by the market. They're systematically important to their customers. They earn a lot of revenue. They're not necessarily profitable, but they do a positive EBITDA, meaning they earn money before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. They generate cash. One of them is actually paying off their debt, although they owe a lot of money. And these are bankruptcy risk companies if they don't fix their operation. So here, they have choices, right? They are all working to make incremental improvements to their operations. If they do that, they reduce their debt leverage ratios, return to profitability, the stock should go through the roof. We're talking about big earnings potential because now it's a tough time. People are talking about recession and all that. So if you can find stocks that are working hard to improve. You do great. Now, if you want to know what those two stocks are, you got to go to Chicago Quantum and read our current positions. Now, how do I do that, Jeff, right? You go to home, 
And then there's a tab called Positions. You click on Positions, you see the stocks. Now I'm not here to pump and dump, so you guys can uh, you go to Chicago Quantum and you can take a look. So there was some other stuff I wanted to share with you. Oh look, I have Yellow Corporation up on my screen. And Yellow just traded at 187. Bid is 186, ask is 187. I also have ATI Physical Therapy up on the screen. Last, um, last not much trading today, which is crazy. Not much trading. It's trading right around 24 cents, 24 cents per share. So it's under a buck. It's going to have to either go up or reverse split. And I also have Summit Midstream on my screen. Not real time. I'm not as worried about it real time, but that's a stock trading about 15 and a quarter. And then I have Atlas Lithium. And Atlas Lithium is up to about 18 bucks a share. And a very exciting stock. Also not a, uh, not a real time look. My real time looks are yellow and ATI Physical Therapy. So that's interesting to look at. So Jeff, what is it about the stocks that you liked? Talk to me. So here's a spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet has all the 3,924 stocks. And you can see the S&P 500 is the best scoring. The negative CQNS score is better because we're doing matrix math and we actually want negative. We want negative energy levels. They have no market cap because they're not stocks. An index is not a stock. And so that market cap, you see the first four? It's interesting though, the best performing, the best risk adjusted expected return investment, if you can only buy one investment, is the S&P 500. Then it's the QQQ, which is NASDAQ Composite 100. Then it's the Russell 2000 ETF, which is the Russell 2000. And then it's the US dollar index bearish fund. So bearish on the dollar, bullish on stocks. Okay, I got that. Pays a tiny dividend. Not so shabby, right? Doing pretty well there. And then you get to the companies that are very, very low risk, like PM Resources, Berkshire Hathaway, MoneyGram. And then you see another ETF, which is the US REIT ETF. And so when you start to see the ETFs doing better than the stocks, I, in a way it shouldn't surprise you, you're paying good money to invest in an ETF. You're paying a manager to manage it, right? But it, to me, it's actually surprising that it, those would be like the top stocks. And so here's another one, Goldman Sachs Physical Gold ETF. That's also doing quite well in terms of risk-adjusted return. So I don't know, if I'm you, I mean, you can invest in some real sleepies. P&M Resources is New Mexico's public, public utility, Berkshire Hathaway, MoneyGram, Crestwood Equity Partners, Pipeline Company, Coca-Cola, you've heard of, Illinois Tool Works, Thomson Reuters, who uh, told us it would be $60,000 to buy their market data, minimum starting bid. I, no thank you. We're not uh, Goldman Sachs ourselves. So, But hey, if you can earn sixty grand a customer, minimum Thomson Reuters. Pretty good investment from a risk-adjusted risk perspective. And then you got the Canadians, Royal Bank of Canada, BCE, Sun Life. So the Canadian firms tend to have a lot lower risk and so tend to do pretty well, pay a, pay a nicer dividend. Um, these are probably reflecting the variance in the, in the um, Canadian dollar, US dollar. But that's, now we're getting complicated. I don't want to get complicated. You see Pepsi, Mondelez, Yum Brands, ADP, McDonald's, Honeywell, low risk. Bank of Montreal, Canadian company, Johnson & Johnson, MasterCard, Accenture, low risk. So the model says it's time to focus on low risk stocks. Your best bet individually is the S&P 500. And no matter what we did, we ran the model for quite some time and it really didn't do that much better than the S&P. So that's what I'm telling you. It's 
making smarter investments today is looking at things differently. Looking at maybe keeping your powder dry. Now, we are not doing that, but you should. We're actually investing in the riskiest garbage that you could find. The worst, the, the no, not the worst. The worst was Corbis because it had no revenue. These companies have a lot of revenue. They're positive EBITDA. They're not bad. They're just they're risky because they have to turn around. Let's just talk a little bit about why the market is risk off. Now, this is an actual run that I would give a client. You might argue it doesn't look pretty. You might argue it's not that clear to read. You'd be arguing something I've heard before. Um, I thought about spending time and coding like a beautiful interface, but you know, if I have a client that really needs like a pretty interface, I've got a Word document. I just pop pop the charts right in, and they never know the difference. So, the variance of the S and P five hundred is lower than it's been in a while. Jeffrey, what does that mean? That means that the S&P 500 is cooling off. It's mellowing out. It's chilling out. It's Netflix and chilling. And that's good for you if you invest in stocks because it means you sleep a little better. You don't have to worry. I, I Personally, I don't think people want to worry about their stocks. I, I mean, I don't mind. I'm up all night. I'm looking at them. I'm thinking about them. I'm reading the chats. I'm checking out the physical infrastructure if I can. But most people don't want to do that. They just want to put their money into something and make a profit. So stock price variance for the S&P 500. In May of last year, about a year ago, it was 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. 1.2. We're back down from a high of like 2.5 in January. Got crazy. We're down to 2.1. So we're not quite down to 1.2 when things were really calm. But they're more calm. And that's good news for you. Because that says we have a downtick on risk. We have a little less risk. The stock price variance is lower. So that feels good. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. So the S&P 500, let me get this right. It's paying a pretty healthy dividend. Is it paying a healthy dividend? Did I say it was paying a healthy dividend? Okay, so last year, it was pay, it paid 1.6%. It's not bad, 1.6%. I mean, you earn more in the bank, but you'll take it. Now, let's look at stocks. So if we look at the stocks all together now, 3,394 stocks. I didn't make the number up. It's right there. Now that risk is 3.5 times 10 to the negative four. I do not have a roughly equivalent number to that. I might be able to go look, but so 3.5 times 10 to the negative four is not lower risk. In fact, it's not lower risk. Let's see if I have one with all of them. I used to actually track all of them. Nope, I deleted. So net net, if you invest in all the stocks, your risk isn't necessarily lower. Stock market, stock price risk is not lower, but for some reason the S&P 500 is settling down. That makes it more attractive for investors. Okay, what else we got, Jeffrey? Talk to me. Well, your expected market return is 4%. So, and that's because a risk-free return right now in our model is 4.6. So you have 4.6, and then our, our analysis says that the market's going to return 8.57% over the next year. If you believe those numbers, you subtract one from the other, roughly speaking, and you get 4% market return to risk. So would you risk all your hard-earned money for 4%? Probably not. That's why we're risk-free. That's why we're low risk right now. That's why we are in aggressive investments, real teeth chattering, hold on to your seat kind of investments because we don't want to just make 4%. We want to make 24% or 200%. So that's where we're at. If I go through other things for you and you see again the S&P 500, the QQQ, the IWM, the dollar, 
the inverse dollar fund. Right? Those are those are solid investments for people. The worst scores are things like Atlas Lithium. Now, Atlas Lithium has an issue where it was a reverse split, and I don't think that our data provider is handling it correctly. But anyway, Atlas Lithium is exceedingly high risk right now. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. Then we got volume, high volume, low volume, and I just want to show you where we are in the movie, so to speak. So your best portfolio is 39 stocks, it's 74 ticks. Then the next one is the same 74 ticks, but it's 44 stocks, then 45 stocks, then 45 stocks, then 46 stocks, then 45, 46, 45. So it's a lot of stocks to have what's effectively 10 to 15 ticks better performance, which is not a material number of ticks. It's not a very big, uh, Big game, but you see UNH, which I think is um, United Healthcare. You got T Rowe Price in there. This is an interesting set of stocks that you'd have to hold on to. JP Morgan, Ford, Cisco, Costco, BlackRock. Um, again, Apple, Amazon, Google, both flavors, Microsoft. So this is why I say it's risk off. There's a lot of other data, but that's enough for you. So I did notice something though, and so I want to show this to you as well. Is 4.6 the, the correct risk adjusted return in this market? And I think what you're going to find is it's, um, it's not. 4.6 is low now. So when we look at this, make it nice and big for you. This is Yahoo Finance US Treasury bond rates. And you can see the bond yields are up. Now it used to be that a 10 year treasury note going up 13 basis points would be earth shattering news. This would be, I, I tell my grandkids about it when I have them. I take a snapshot and I say, grandkids, I want you to get up on, uh, get up in your high chairs, eat your uh, streamed, whatever, cream spinach, and we're going to talk about treasury yield curve, and we're going to talk about 13 basis point moves. But now, I wouldn't even mention it. I see my wife coming home from work, I'd rather ask her how the car was driving then mention 13 basis point moves. But I will say this, take a look at the 13 week treasury bill at 4.82. So 4.82 is a really high interest rate. And that is what we base our risk free return on. It's a 13 week, it's, it's three months. You wanna do a one month, you're at 4.476. You wanna do one year, you're 4.717. So 4.7 for the year, 4.5 for the month, 4.8 and a quarter for three months. So I think our risk-free rate of return's gotta come up to 4.83%, which means the return to risk if everything else stays constant is lower. And that's gonna make our model even lower risk. So you should keep your eye on this. Lots of people look at this stuff. They look at the one month, they look at the one year, they look at the three month treasury, and they say, Jeffrey, I gotta know, should I just put my money away? Should I go to treasury direct? So if you're a retail investor and you've got maybe $25,000 a year to invest, you are not buying crazy ETFs and, and all kinds of stuff. You're buying Series I savings bonds. You're gonna earn almost 7% on your money, 6.89%. You can do it for up to $10,000 a year if you're a US citizen. Do it. And the rest of the money? The rest of the money goes into the S&P 500 equity index fund. 
Do you know why it goes into that? Because it's the best investment for a normal person. For a normal retail investor, put your money in a spider, S&P 500. Or you find a Vanguard, a Fidelity, a Charles Schwab that has one of these uh, index funds, passive investments. And you take it and you run with it, right? It's hard. It's hard to know what to do. But this plus treasuries, I-series, you're good. And by the way, you don't have to pay us for this advice. This is free advice. Don't say I never gave you nothing for free. Go to market information. Go to retail investor. I don't want your money. Myron, who actually just reached out, wants to meet up. Can I get some good tips for free? What should a little guy like me invest in? By the way, Myron was not so little. Myron works at a cell phone store and he works very hard. And so he wants his money to do okay. He doesn't want to suffer. So he said he had 25 grand in total to put away for his retirement. Great. He's a U.S. citizen. I said for the first 10 grand, put it in I-series savings bonds. The next 15 goes on a low-cost passive index equity mutual fund like the S&P 500. Rinse and repeat next year. And that's it. Wrap it up. By the time he's... 40, he's over a millionaire. Easy. Easy. And he wraps it up. I'd like to be a millionaire. Wouldn't you? You don't have to take a lot of crazy risk. Now, for those who want to take a risk, let's go. Let's roll, right? But for those who don't, I would say, you know, go, go where the safety is. So I'm going to take a look at some stocks that I like to look at. I'm going to take a look at some some charts here. So what I would say now is if, if you're happy, go ahead and, and uh, you can turn off the video. I shared with you what I meant to share with you. I'm Jeffrey Cohen. Quantitative analysis of U.S. stock market. We produce signals once a day on what you should buy or what you should short. We also provide signals for things like volume, Kurtosis, skewness, big ups, big downs, volume spikes, price spikes, you name it. Things that you might use to gain an edge in the market. So that before the market's open, you take a look and you can get maybe narrowed down your focus on what you might want to, want to trade on or trade options on. And that's what we do. And if you come on in and you look at our services, which is under advisory services, then... You see a description of what we do. We can create a separately managed account for you. I'd love to do that. But for most people, you could, just, you could help us out by a membership. You could buy a run, buy an up run, buy a down run, or get an investment planning workshop where we could spend some time together. All that is right there on the books. It's a retail service. It's repeatable reliable if it's not on time it's free because who wants yesterday's analysis today you want today's analysis today so if you pay me and I give you yesterday's analysis today I'll either give you a free run tomorrow or I'll give you your money back that's it so thanks a lot for watching so now I'm just gonna do what I do and let's see what I do all right